you know, sometimes you just get matched up against a dude who's using Pokemon you just hate to play against. And that is exactly the case in today's match. This dude's working with uh, specifically Ambipom, uh, Scizor, Clefable, and Gliscor. All Pokemon that are super annoying. Pretty much everybody and their mother decides to use these mons, and for good reason. I mean, they're extremely good. But it just gives me a little extra fuel to see if I can get this team to work against it. So let's go ahead and hop right into the match. So when you see a dude with an Ambipom in the team preview, you can pretty much expect them to lead off with that thing, pimp slap you once, and then you turn. However, when life gives you a monkey, you just say fuck the monkey and bail. I decided to just go with my mess brick because there's not really much I want to handle this. And I know that I would like to prioritize trying to get up my stealth rock here. Of course, there's a lot of pivoting going on uh, with Ambipom, plus there's U-turn scissor likely. So getting up the stealth rock is going to be able to punish some of that, uh, that pivoting going on here. As of course, the fake out does an absolutely insane amount of damage. Damn near slaps the dreadlock directly off my head, but I'm just going to stay in here and go for the... Uh, the Stealth Rock here is I am expecting the U-Turn. I can guarantee that I get it up. And uh, I am able to live with a little bit of a chunk here after the U-Turn. And that is going to be super annoying because I have to deal with that monkey essentially doing that exact thing uh, the entire game. So he ends up bringing in the Honchkrow here. And this boy comes in looking pimp as hell. I honestly feel like I'm about to be pimp slapped by this thing as well. Um, I'm actually thinking that potentially I could catch this thing trying to go for a Sucker Punch to knock me out. Um, so I decide, you know what, I'm just going to stay in and go for a Thunder Wave. Main reason is for that is because I don't really have a switch into this thing. Either a Brave Bird or a Night Slash is probably coming, uh, but it does actually end up finishing me off with a Night Slash there. So Mesprit goes down, which is unfortunate, but I was at least able to lay down my rocks. And I really, like I said, I just did not have a switch into that. So uh, now on the free switch, I decide to bring in Entei. Now, as we've discussed multiple times before, nothing can switch into Entei unless you're running Flash Fire. Um, the main reason why this thing is such a low tier is because... Uh, in higher tiers, you know, Heatran runs around and just ruins this thing's day. But no Heatran for us here, so I can safely click uh, that Sacred Fire. And with the Choice Band, that is going to do over half to literally anything that comes in. Uh, so he actually decides to bring in the Clefable, which is amazing. And I cannot stress this enough. Clefable is the Pokemon I hate playing against probably the most. So seeing as I'm able to two-hit KO this thing with the Sacred Fire, that is absolutely amazing. And down goes the chewed-ass piece of gum with his weird frosted green tips. Uh, so that is solid. I don't have to worry about Clefable setting up. I think it could possibly be unaware and ruin my setup. It just, it, overall, just such an annoying Pokemon. But now, of course, you deal with one McAsshole, then the next one comes in. As Ambipom's able to get that free fake out damage, does literally so much damage uh, to the point where I'm like worried about a double hit. Um, I do want to conserve my Entei because they have the Scizor running around, and that's my direct answer to that. So I do have to switch here, and I figure Tentacles is probably the best option here. Uh, so I come in, ready to play my clarinet on his ass, except he just does not want the free show. Decides to U-turn and gets a matchup here. Of course, like I said, that's pretty much what Monkey does these days. Fake out, U-turn, and just being a dick. So he decides to go into uh, the Breloom. Now, Breloom is not necessarily on the list of hated mons, but I do hate the one thing about this thing, and that is Spore, the guaranteed sleep. Super difficult to deal with, um, but I do have the grass type with Tropius on my team, so I figure I could probably just switch directly into this thing, and even though, if he didn't go for the Spore, I, I resist both of its stabs. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe, just maybe, we could, <laughs> we could get Banan to do some shit. So I come in, uh, do get the Spore prediction correct, as uh, one thing to note, he actually has two poison healers on this team in Breloom and the Gliscor. Uh, so this guy's just sucking up all the poison all day. So I decide to go for the substitute here expecting a switch thinking I could even if I don't get Tropius to get a like a full sweep here I could still try to poke some holes in the team and just be annoying and maybe in the process show off that Tropius is cool So uh, I go for the substitute as he actually bling, brings in the Gliscor here now This is actually pretty solid because the only thing this thing would really have to hit me with uh, is likely going to be something like knockoff. So behind my substitute, I'm safe to go for the Dragon Dance here as he actually goes for the Stealth Rock. People sleeping on the Tropius. Uh, he doesn't see it as much of a threat. So I go for the plus one. Now, of course, this is going to be Harvest Tropius. So I have to get down to Berry range to be able to activate my Lychee Berry, which boosts my attack as well. And if I want to do anything against Gliscor, I'm going to need a whole shit ton of attack boost because I am a Tropius and Game Freak decided not to help this thing out at all. So you got to do it yourself. Now this whole matchup is kind of interesting. Gliscor is super difficult for my team to deal with. So even if I can get some chip damage off on this thing to put it in range later, I'm totally gonna be happy with that. Um, because yeah, I really just don't have anything to deal with this. So I go for another Dragon Dance here behind the sub. He does tell me to knock it off and gets rid of the substitute. So now I'm thinking, all right, I'm at plus two attack, plus two speed. Of course I'm faster 
Now all I gotta do is get some more attack boost to make this shit happen. So I'm gonna end up going for a substitute here, whittle down that health just a little bit, and uh, after it looks like about two more, I am gonna be in range to get that lychee berry going. He does decide to knock off again. And as I'm over here setting up more bean bags, I'm kind of thinking about what I've done. I'm nearly too deep to give up on this strat at this point, so Tropius is gonna go all the way. Um, and it kind of just depends on what type of Gliscor this is. If it's gonna be uh, max defense and HP, I'm gonna have a rough time with it, but it kind of looking like it's gonna be, because a lot of them, you know, tend to tend to roll that way. So this substitute, you'll notice, did not that knockoff did not break my substitute. And I misclicked, go for another substitute, unfortunately, and that is a horrible, horrible misplay, uh, because I already had one up. So you fucking hate to see it. But I'm looking at the range now, and I know that I can go for one more sub here. It's gonna break. Um, it's gonna bust open that lychee berry, and it's gonna allow me to live. And then with no item, the knockoff shouldn't be able to kill me here. So that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, I get down to 3 HP. I bust open that berry. I get that attack boost. And he goes for the knockoff. Of course, I do not have an item. And now it's not going to allow him to kill the substitute. I then harvest another lychee berry. And I say, damn, your boy is still hungry. I'm a growing tropius. And I get that extra attack boost. So now I'm behind the substitute. And my attack is pretty much as far as I can get at this point. Uh, I decide to go for the Leaf Blade here, and this Gliscor is about thick as shit because that does not do nearly enough. Um, the unfortunate thing about that is that now I have to end this matchup without my substitute, because of course he has priority in both the Scizor and the, um, and the Monkey. So, you know, Tropius is not going to quite happen here, but I'm over here chilling, floating, chilling in the wind, having a good time. My bananas are just dangling, and I'm just out here making Tropius happen. Um, I decide to just go for another uh, Leaf Blade here. He decides to bring in full health Honchkrow, take some Stealth Rock damage, and Banana says, I eat that shit for breakfast with these bananas, and that is able to take care of the Honchkrow. So, that's actually pretty solid, able to grab a nice kill. Plus, I was able to also get uh, that uh, Gliscor into range to kill it later. So, I'm honestly happy with that. As now, of course, he brings in Scizor, and the bullet punch is the most obvious shit i ever done seen. So I can switch right into my Tentacruel here. I decide to save Tropius basically just for the option um, to essentially either switch that thing into a Spore later, or just be basically Death Fodder to get a free switch. So, of course, obvious bullet punch happens, and judging by that damage, I'm actually thinking that this thing might be Choice Band at this point. Uh, I haven't calced anything, but that's kind of what I'm led to believe here. But Tentacruel is a good option here because uh, I know that I can live basically any attack here and get my rapid spin off for free. And without any hazards on my side of the field, it's going to make my life just a little bit easier. So I get that rapid spin off. I'd be spinning quick as hell. And uh, I don't care how many speed boosts I got. Unfortunately, I cannot go before a bullet punch. So uh, this thing is going to be able to knock me out. But Tentacruel was able to get rid of those hazards. And honestly, I basically just wanted a free matchup with... Uh, Entei against this thing regardless so one more BP is gonna take care of me and now you know Entei does have a way easier time coming in without having to worry uh, about the stealth rock so this team that I'm using really loves a free switch in like this because Entei basically just is, gets to come in and do his fire daddy shit and like either grab a kill or just seriously wound some stuff potentially burn uh, but regardless this scissor is about allergic as hell to Entei as a whole and has to get the hell out of here so he does end up switching. Now, he actually decides to bring back in the Flying Scorpion, old buff-ass Zubat over here, is going to take some Stealth Rock damage, and it's actually looking like the damage from Tropius is going to allow the Sacred Fire to kill. So, Tropius did not die in vain, essentially grabbed two kills there, and you absolutely love to see that. So, down goes the second most annoying Pokemon on the team, except now i got to deal with freaking Monkey <laughs> once again. Um, so, this thing, of course, just going to fake out. And I figure, you know what, rather than letting Entei take that, I'm just going to go ahead and switch it out, go into Tropius. Pretty much exactly what I saved it for at this point uh, is kind of just a nice little punching bag for the old fake out. And I can conserve Entei. Now, I, I'm thinking about in the long game, I would like to have Entei's uh, extreme speed open for me just in case it's needed. Just want to make sure my Entei boy is safe. But I've been saving this for this entire match. And this is my one answer for Ambipon. I have the Choice Scarf Heracross in the back of the team, and it's looking like it is Rampage time. So, of course, with the Scarf, I am able to outspeed, and I basically just needed this monkey to stay in on me one time, and that is exactly what happens. He does not have a switch into a close combat, and it's satisfying as hell to punch that fool in the face. So down goes the Ambipom. I do get my Moxie boost. That little plus one attack is going to be super useful here, as two Pokemon left will be the Breloom and the Scizor. So... 
In comes Scizor, and I'm actually happy that this comes in first, because I believe with one defense drop, I can still take a bullet punch. Um, so I decide to stay in, go for the close combat. Unluckily for him, he actually doesn't even bullet punch, and a close combat takes care of it, which is insane. That plus one boost allows me to kill it. Um, I believe they just didn't see the kill with the bullet punch, so they destroyed, decided to try to live. And that, my friend, is your first mistake. Heracross does not fuck around. I was under the impression that everybody knew that, but sometimes you just gotta remind some fools. So the last Pokemon is gonna be the Breloom. Still chilling at full health, but after two Moxie boosts, uh, it does look like a close combat should be able to finish this thing off. And if not, I've got the Extreme Speed Entei in the back. So let's see if Hank can just bring it home. The late game sweep is extremely satisfying. Being able to just finish off their last three Pokemon with just a, a nice little Scarf Heracross is the absolute shit. And that does take care of the Mushroom Boy. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the match. This was a little bit of a longer one, but sometimes you gotta, you gotta save the threat in the back to make shit happen. Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace out.